thoroughly enjoyed these Q and A's and answering all your questions. Thank you so much. Um, truly, everybody from around the world is. I love staying connected and I love staying engaged because uh, it's important. Not only is it important, I think for uh, maybe my, I can't speak for you, but my mental <laughs> stability, but I also have a lot of fun sharing these stories and anecdotes and life lessons and um, uh, life lessons that I've learned over time. So switching gears a little bit, going back to uh, my other profession, uh, my, the other way I made a livelihood in the middle of the squared circle in the world of professional wrestling. Uh, this question I've been asked for years and I am not only excited to uh, give you my answer about this and about this about this man, about this uh, human being who is a very good friend of mine, uh, but also I'm quite proud to share this because the influence that this man has had on my career has been invaluable. And um, that man is Stone Cold Steve Austin. The question was asked by a fan uh, how I felt about headlining a record three WrestleManias with Steve Austin and how has Steve influenced my career uh, in and out of the ring. So let me just start with, there was, there have been so many feuds over the years uh, without me and Steve um, that, you know, with all the top performers in the world of professional wrestling um, and but there has been no feud that has been a greater box office draw and that in my opinion and it's so totally biased by the way <laughs> because it's me that actually had more x-factor heat and electricity and sometimes you can't write it you can't put your finger on it but when it happens it explodes and it is an emotionality that you can't deny. And lucky enough for myself, for Steve, Vince McMahon and the company of the WWE, we saw this and we embraced it and we were off to the races. Let me just start with, I had been a big fan of Stone Cold Steve Austin before he was Stone Cold Steve Austin as stunning Steve Austin, uh, his wrestling days in world class, his wrestling days uh, in WCW um, and of course up in ECW with Paul Heyman and that crew before he came over to the WWE and I had been a uh, I was I was a pretty I was I was just turning heel at that time and this was in, at the end of 1997 and I joined a faction by the name of uh, the Nation of Domination and uh, they were great guys we're still friends to this day uh, the Godfather, and then Ron Simmons and D'Lo Brown, and it was a it was a black militant uh, faction. And when I joined, the WWE executives said, "Listen, you're going to join this faction because you're half black and you're half Samoan. Therefore, you could join and you make it about race." And I thought, well, I feel like, well, why make it about race when we have an opportunity here to expand on that? Actually. And instead of making me join the nation about race, let's make it about respect. Let me go out there and say, it's not a black thing, it's not a white thing, it's a me, I'm gonna beat your ass thing, and you're gonna respect this man when I leave the ring. And that wound up being uh, the way we went, and it wound up uh, working in my favor because I became quickly, uh, very fortunately, the number one bad guy in the WWE. After that promo, I walked by Steve Austin in the back, um, and he just looked at me and winked and he went on and did his thing. So we were kept separate for a little while because he was the number one baby face, the number one draw in the wrestling company. So we were, we had a night where it was our first night where we were going to see if there was any heat or attraction between, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin and myself. So we come out live on Raw and we're up at the top of the ramp. And I forgot what city we're in, but Stone, we come out as the nation, and uh, we had this badass theme music. We are the nation of domination. Had just a cool driving beat to it. We come out, and basically Stone Cold says, "Bring it, come on! I don't give a shit who you are, what color you are, one of you, all four of you, come on down to the ring and get some of this." So we do a thing where I'm looking at my guys. I'm like, "I'll go, I'll go, I'll go," and they're like, "Yeah, you go." I take off running down that ramp. In that moment, you start to hear the crowd and feel the crowd go, uh, I hit the ring. The moment I hit the ring, 
I try and throw a punch, doesn't work, bang. Steve kicks me in the stomach, he gives me his famous Stone Cold Stunner, boom, lays me out, that's it. We get to the back that night. I see Vince McMahon, Steve Austin, some of the agents backstage, and everyone collectively felt like, they said, did you feel that out there? And I said, I, I felt it, I felt the stunner, that's for sure, <laughs> when he kicked my ass. But I did feel that. Um, and they said, there's something special between you and Stone Cold Steve Austin. And I mean, I just, I'd love to be in the ring with him and I just thought, well, let me just keep putting in the work. So some time went by, we had WrestleMania 14, and then comes WrestleMania 15 in Philadelphia. It was my very first WrestleMania going in as WWE Heavyweight Champion facing Stone Cold Steve Austin. It was our first WrestleMania. We were the main event in Philadelphia, WrestleMania 15. And I was so excited. Uh, and I was just so honored um, to do the honors, if you will. And so we built this match up. And again, you know, Steve had broken his neck and he came back from a broken neck. So he was very particular about who he wrestled with because in the world of wrestling, while it is showmanship and while it is fiction, how we are trained and there's gonna be things that are just gonna hurt. And there's gonna be times when we gotta lay it in from suplexes to chair shots, whatever it is, there's gonna be times where it's gonna hurt. But what I took a lot of pride in was never hurting my opponent. Some things I do to you is gonna hurt, it's gonna sting, it's gonna leave a mark and you're gonna feel it tomorrow, but your bones aren't gonna break, your tendons aren't gonna tear, and I'm gonna take care of you. So he trusted me, and he, there was only a handful of guys who he trusted with, uh, with his injury and, and wrestling in, in at that time. So I was so honored. We went into Philadelphia, uh, main event, WrestleMania. Uh, we did some pretty good buy rate numbers, um, and we had a phenomenal match and I did the honors, he beat me right in the middle of the ring, one, two, three, um, and we knew we had something special at that time, and we knew that if we did it right, we can maybe get one more WrestleMania out of this, we'll see. So that was WrestleMania 15, WrestleMania 16 happens, then comes the big one, WrestleMania 17. WrestleMania 17, myself against Stone Cold Steve Austin in his home state of Texas, at the at the Houston Astrodome. I believe we're the, we were the last big event at the Astrodome, either ourselves or George Strait, the legendary goat himself, George Strait. And we set, uh, we set a record that night and we build this match up. And by this point, both of us had earned our stripes and we were on fire. Both characters, The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin, we were on fire. We had wrestled around the world together. We were wrestling every night. We knew each other so well, and we knew each other how we thought in the ring. We knew what the other was gonna do instinctually, where he went, I was right there. And so much of our stuff had to be ad-libbed because again, Steve was working with a broken neck. So every night was a different match. We knew the finish, whether he would win or I would win, but we had to call everything out in the ring, basically based on how he would feel. So we have these matches that were scheduled maybe for 10, 15 minutes and sometimes would go on for 40 minutes because we were just loving what we were doing out there and we trusted each other. So then we go into WrestleMania 17, Houston Astrodome. We're on fire. The crowd is on fire. It's his home state. And we have a phenomenal match. And the night before we went out for a steak dinner, myself, Steve Austin, and Pat Patterson, and we were talking about the match and, and it's just, it was it was a nice quiet before the storm because who knows what was gonna happen the next day. We just knew we were gonna do something special and hopefully, and be part of history. We went out and we had a match. I think the match was for maybe 35 or 45 minutes. Our cardio and conditioning was on point. We had been working really hard. Uh, it was a phenomenal match. It was a very, it was a great story we told in the ring. We both bled like stuck pigs. <laughs> Back in the good old days when you could bleed. Uh, bring on the blood. That was my nickname at University of Miami. Let the blood flow. 
I'll get into that story later uh, at some other point. But um, we had this amazing match, and this was the night that Stone Cold Steve Austin uh, beat me in the middle of the ring. And he beat me, and he actually, and he actually turned heel that night. He turned into a bad guy that night, um, which was short-lived because everybody loves Stone Cold Steve Austin. But at the end of this finish, and you could watch it back on YouTube, is he takes a steel chair, and he and I, it was it wasn't counted. I said, "You just hit me as many times as you need to. When you when you when you're done, I'll know." He beat the shit out of me with that steel chair. It didn't hurt me. But I gave him my body and I trusted it. We we're both bleeding. He beat the shit out of me with that steel chair and he goes on to win one, two, three. We set a record that night for pay-per-view, pay-per-view buy right, buy rates. And it was a very special night. I'll never forget it. Now cut to WrestleMania 19, uh, Safeco Field in Seattle, Washington. This is his last match, Stone Cold Steve Austin. And when I mean his last match, I mean literally this is the very last match of his career. No one knew it, but we knew it. I have goosebumps now thinking about it. Man. We had this incredible match. I hit him with three rock bottoms. I believe it was three rock bottoms. Appropriately, that's what it needs. That's what you need to, to beat the rattlesnake. And I beat him in the middle of the ring, one, two, three. In that moment, in front of 55,000 people, Um, you can actually see me when you watch it back I'm sitting up and I sit next to him as he's laying there in front of everybody and I whispered to him I thank you so much for everything that you've done for me and I said I love you and I heard him say I love you too and hit him on the chest and I left left him in the ring and that was it and he retired that night and I quietly retired as well. I was at that time quietly leaving the WWE with such gratitude. But the reason why he's influenced me so much is because he did something in that moment which was he did right by the business. That was so good to him by letting me beat him. So when I came back to wrestle John Cena and the plan was that we were gonna go back to back WrestleManias Miami and New York in 2012 and 2013. We're gonna main event back-to-back WrestleManias we did. We broke, me and Steve's record, me and John broke that record in Miami, my hometown. But in New York is where I did for John what Steve did for me, which was do right by the business that we love, professional wrestling, and that's the way you go out. That's the way you end your career. Doesn't matter how big of a star you are, you go out on your shield and on your back. One, two, three. So, you know, the fact that I had so Cold's last match, the fact that we were able to break records all across the country, all around the world, it's, it, it is truly such an honor. But also, um, I'm so grateful because had it not been for Steve Austin and for Steve Austin first, but then for these other guys, The Undertaker, Triple H, my friends, Mick Foley, Kurt Angle, Chris Jericho, all these guys who allowed me to have the career that I had because we're all just in it together. But um, anyway, I just, it's this weekend is I think that anniversary of me and Stone Cold's match, so it was appropriate. Thank you for the question. And Steve Austin, you, you, Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair, are on my uh, Mount Rushmore professional wrestling. The fourth one, I vacillate between San Martino and a few others, and I'm on the back of Mount Rushmore, raising my eyebrow. Uh, But brother, I love you and I thank you, and I can't thank you enough for everything you've done, and it was truly an honor, an honor, to be the biggest box office draw with you in our world of professional wrestling. Um, I don't have a beer. I don't have a tequila right now, but I toast to you. Thank you, brother. I love you. Two times for the good time. You know what that means. Thank you guys for the questions. This is 15 minutes of your life. You're never going to get back. And uh, everybody stay healthy out there. And uh, I love you guys. and, And thanks again for your questions. Talk soon.